Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> uh, wow, my head is apparently very small. <laughs> uh, so hey, it's Meg. Uh, welcome back. Today I'm doing my September wrap up. Um, if you notice that I look more beautiful today, it's because uh, I got my makeup professionally done and I got a haircut. Looks great, right? <laughs> Editing Meg here. <laughs> I am dying at the fact that you can just see a hair. <laughs> you can just see a hair <laughs> coming up the bottom of the mouth. Right? So yeah, hi. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. This isn't working out, but uh, I don't have eyes. Okay, so uh, I'm doing my September wrap up today in my Halloween costume is Oscar Michael Myers. Get it? Oscar Myers? Oscar Michael Myers? We're all trying to find the guy who did this. I don't even want to be around anymore. I'm gonna rip the fucking head off! Huh, that was a lot. That was a little too much. Okay, so like I was saying, today we're doing my September wrap up. I read 14 books in September. So in typical fashion, I will start with the books that I liked the least and then work my way up to the books that I liked the most. So, yeah, um, anyways, I'm back, baby, because I have just been uploading pre film videos for a while now because of the fact that I, you know, got surgery and had to travel for it. Um, but I'm back. It's been two weeks since my surgery. Um, it's rough. Recovery is rough. I'm in pain right now. Um, but uh, yeah, just taking it little by little, day by day. I was diagnosed with another chronic illness while I was there, interstitial cystitis, which apparently has been contributing to my bladder pain and, um, you know, had the endometriosis removed, my appendix removed, I had some nerves removed, I had my uterus fixed, literally the whole nine yards. So um, yeah, it's a very slow process, but uh, I'm alive. Anyways, let's just jump in to some book reviews. So like I said, I read 14 books and um, I am going to start with the book that I absolutely hated. Let me just pull up my stats here. What the hell am I doing? Yeah, so I had one one star book and the book that I hated the most that everyone else loves is The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. What the fuck? So this book, I am not even gonna tell you what it's about because you know what? I'm not gonna sit here and spoil it like every other fucker on YouTube has. <laughs> that was that was very aggressive. Um, but no, I'm mad, I'm mad. You know why? I went in thinking I knew absolutely nothing. So this is just about a guy, a teenage girl, and a cat, and that's it. That's all I'm going to tell you. Literally, that's all I'm going to tell you. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of mad because I went in thinking I knew absolutely nothing about this book, and turns out I knew everything about this book because when people say like certain things about this book it literally gives the twist away because you're like expecting it like oh okay so they're talking about this so like this is obviously gonna happen and like that's the twist oh my god I am so mad I am so mad and then um, not only the fact that people spoiled it I actually just hated this book um, <clears throat> I don't really understand the hype because you're flipping like POVs between these three different perspectives, but they don't make sense. Like literally, it does not make sense. It's like another one of those annoying books that don't make sense. And then everyone's like, oh, stick with it, stick with it to the end. And yeah, everything is explained and wrapped up and makes sense in the end. But I don't want to sit and suffer through a giant book about 
nothing because I didn't fucking know what was going on. It's like, if something doesn't make sense, I don't care and I don't want to read it. So this was a struggle to get through. I had to like get the audio through the library in order to finish this just to see what I could yell about. I just feel like her writing is not for me. Um, I read Sundial by her also and it has that same formula of like you have to keep reading and reading and reading in order for it to make sense and like that's not something that keeps me intrigued with a book. Like I want to know where the plot's going and like I want to figure things out. I don't want to sit through like nonsense you know so I just think her books are not for me I'm sure you know she's wonderful but uh, yeah not my style babe um, this just made me infuriated and honestly if you're someone that gets on YouTube and you're like this is a man blank 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 I feel like I have been personally attacked and victimized when you come on YouTube and give the twist away, this is your head. This is this book. Okay? Next. Moving on into two star books. Um, I read, I think I just had one two star and it was Puzzle House by Duncan Ralston. So, um, I like Duncan Ralston. I don't care what anyone has to say about it. I really don't. I don't care about your opinion. Um... I <laughs> got this one from NetGalley and it's just a general horror book about these people who get sent to this like house. It's kind of like an escape room house <laughs> and they get sent there for this inheritance and it ends up being like a saw situation. So they have to like solve all these like puzzles and games in order to get through to the end. Um, and it, it, it was, it was like a Saw movie, so I thought I was going to absolutely love this, but unfortunately I just was not into, the characters fell flat for me, I didn't really care, the actual games were more, like, this is not extreme horror, I feel like if they were super extreme horror, it would make things interesting and, like, wild for me, but they were just, like, there were some gory games thrown in there, like there was some gore in this book, but it wasn't anything like crazy, so I just felt like the puzzles were underwhelming. And then where this ended up going, I just wasn't a huge fan of it. So unfortunately this was a miss for me, but I am looking forward to reading more from Duncan Ralston um, since I read Womb and uh, Dare I say I was into it, okay? Then, jumping into three star books. I read uh, The Foot Doctor by A.J. Spencer. Hopefully that's his name if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so this one is super short. It's 60 pages, I believe. And you're following this guy who... He gets like a foot injury and he ends up at this sketchy doctor's office and the doctor there is sketchy, like there's something going on. And um, it was okay. I almost think that this was too short because I really liked the concept of this one and kind of what was happening, but I just think the execution, like in the beginning, like the first half, it really had my attention with like this crazy doctor so I would have liked to see more like build up and action involving that because I just feel like it was very this happened and then something happens and then this happens and then this happens but it wasn't like there was no build up as far as the like atmosphere the creep creepiness the horror aspects I guess Am I making sense? Um, Belle, please stop playing with pens. Girlfriend, what are you doing? Um, I just would have liked to see more s scenes involving the um, doctor in the beginning and just that overall tension. So I feel like if the book was longer and things were more like explained and drawn out, this would have been like great for me. Overall, I mean for like a new indie author that I haven't seen any other books from, I don't know, um, 
I feel like this wasn't bad. And this book also was completely full of editing and like grammar mistakes. Like it was, uh, I found a lot, okay? Let me just say that. Um, but I am someone that is more, a little more lenient when it comes to errors from like a new author. But if you're someone where you will just automatically give a book one star because of editing things, think twice, okay? Then my next three star, I read um, Grady Hendrix's short story Ankle Snatcher. This is part of the like, what was it? The Creature Feature collection that a couple horror authors did. So um, this was his short story. It's about like, it's like your typical boogeyman under the bed sort of story. So again, my problem was it was too short. It was like a 30 page short story. And I just feel like it wasn't anything special or crazy or amazing. It was just like, oh, okay. Like just your typical like, boogeyman kind of story. Um, I did enjoy the ending. I think it was well written, so I gave it three stars. My next three, three star was Hex Education by Maureen Kilmer. I absolutely loved Suburban Hell, so you guys know I had to pick this one up and read it. Well, it was an arc, but um, this one is about these three girls and well these three women that are like in their 40s and 20 years ago when they were in college the three of them were in this um like witch coven like they had no idea that they were witches or something and then they came together and started a coven and ended up doing actual magic something like that and they started a fire on their college campus so they kind of just like went their separate ways. They haven't spoken about it since, like they haven't been friends since. And now in present day, a little reunion brings them back together and they discover that they still have these magical capabilities. What is that? Uh, this reminds me, it's just like a cute, it's not really horror. It's kind of, you know, like what I wanted Cackle by Rachel Harrison to be about like these witches. It's very Disney Channel vibes, you know. I feel like early 2000s, I would be sitting in my living room watching this as a movie, you know what I mean? So I thought it was cute, it was all right. Um, I do feel like a lot of parts dragged for me. It was very slow and like, oh, we're going to a PTA meeting and today's the, the gala and you know, like whatever, um, just like rich suburban moms. And I do feel like the friendship, the friendships in um, suburban hell were a little more stronger than the friendships in this one. So yeah, I gave it three stars. Uh, next three star was Filthy Secrets by Jonathan Butcher. He sent this one over to me and he sent one over to me for a vlog. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> but this one is like this splatterpunk smut book. Um, <laughs> so this is about this woman who is married to this man. It's like a short, this is another like 60 page book or something like that. Belle, what are you doing? She's trying to like get on top of Sam from Trick or Treat. <laughs> He's like a door stopper uh, for me and I don't know what Belle is doing. But anyways, um, filthy secrets. So this is about this woman who's married to this guy and she has some like fetishes and like sexual needs that aren't being met and she's a little bit of like a obsessive stalker type. I don't really know <laughs> how to des describe this book other than it was so freaking disgusting. It was so disgusting. Obviously well written. I actually, I, I really, really, really love Jonathan Butcher's writing. Like he's fantastic in my opinion. Um, so I think it was well written. <laughs> it was just disgusting. It was just like, if you're looking for a little romantic splatterpunk disgusting for the sake of, check this one out. <laughs> Jumping into a 3.5, I had, Alice Feeney's Good Bad Girl. So this one, 
Oh, this one is very divisive since I, I've seen everyone kind of arguing about this one online. So we are following this woman whose baby gets kidnapped while she's at the grocery store. Like it gets snatched and she doesn't know what happens. And now it's 20 years later and we're following um, this woman in a care home. And she is, I don't know, like in her 80s and her kids are trying to sell her house and so on and so forth. And she becomes friends with this other like caretaker. Did I say care? She's in a nursing home. Did I say that? Anyways, she becomes friends with one of the caretakers there, like a CNA or whatever. And um, this girl's like 18. So we're following their two POVs and then the POV from um, two other people in the book. And then you kind of learn how all of their lives are intertwined and impacted by one another. I don't really know what else to say. I don't want to give anything away. In my opinion, this is not a thriller. I, I really don't think that this is a thriller. Um, it's more of like a twisty family drama sort of thing. Like I wouldn't label this, I mean I guess it is a little bit of a thriller, but I wouldn't label this as like, ooh, psychological thriller, you know? Um, oh, and there is like a murder that happens at this nursing home. And then that's what we're trying to figure out. So like it is a little bit of a thriller, but um, the twists, there were tons of them, but half of them were like very obvious. Like I just already assumed those things. And then the other half were, like I said, it's not like super, ooh, twisty. It's very drama, drama based. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people did not like this because it was underwhelming as far as the reveals and what was going on. Um, so I do think this is one of her worst books, I guess. I mean, I liked it, um, but this one and Daisy Darker are just like not my favorites from her. I don't know what's going on, but um, every other book I loved. So I don't know. I really don't have much to say about this one. Um, I just wanted to warn you that it's more like drama based, but um, I did like it. I was entertained. I was in, like intrigued to find out what was going on. It made me want to keep reading. So I gave it a 3.5. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I just wish it was like a little more crazy. Like I wish more things were going on that were sinister. <laughs> the first uh, four star that I had was the Conservators collection uh, by three different authors. I am losing my mind. I got a little too uh, under the influence, I think. Anyways, this is a collection of three different stories, one from each author, and uh, we're following different, like all three stories have a supernatural, paranormal type twist and vibe to them. Not twist, but like theme is what I mean. Um, they all have that supernatural theme and that's not my favorite. You guys know this. I'm not like a supernatural, like paranormal stuff in books just does not get me. So the best it can do is like keep me intrigued and entertained, but that's exactly what this book did. I felt completely just entertained the entire time. Like I wanted to keep reading. I wanted to know what was going on. Um, and even though it wasn't something that like scared me or like that I was obsessed with, um, it was something that did keep me entertained. So that's why I gave it a four star rating as well as all three writers know how to write. Like they all did such a great job. I thought the writing was great. Um, and I do like that there was some like gore scenes sprinkled in there. There were times where sometimes it felt like a little bit extreme horror just kind of like thrown in there like sprinkled on top but it wasn't anything like super 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 graphic um so i don't know check this one out if you just want like a general horror book it reminded me of like tales from the crypt that sort of vibe so yeah 
Next, I read two books by Judith Sonnet. I gave both of them four stars. The first one is Jump Scare. This is another one that is a paranormal, uh, supernatural kind of book. And it's not super extreme horror. This is totally different from what Judith normally writes. And I enjoyed it. So we're following this group of kids. They um, are going back to this house that is like a creepy haunted house. There's some things going on there and they are now adults and they are confronting what happened in their childhood. And I just thought it was really well done. I thought there, was, there were a couple scenes where it was like, you know, a jump scare sort of situation. And I just really enjoyed the way that this one was written. I loved the, uh, you know, past and present sort of thing going on, as well as the ending was fantastic. I really, really love this one. Highly recommend. Like I said, it's not super extreme or anything like that. And then um, the next one is Blood Suck, which is super extreme. So we are following um, these people that film snuff films. And you're getting like the whole first half of the book is this like snuff film trope thing with these sisters and it's wild. And then the second half of the book it turns into this massively insane crazy bananas vampire book with tons of blood and gore and craziness. So this book is just wild. This is one where you get those realistic, you know, crazy snuff film scenes and then suddenly it's like a wild supernatural book. So you kind of get the best of both worlds and this one is such a fun time. So I really enjoyed both of them and both a completely different vibe. Then my next four star book was Boys in the Valley by Fri Philip Fricasse. Am I saying that right? Um, so this is a general horror book about this orphanage in the early 1900s. Uh, you know, there's a, so there are a bunch of boys at this orphanage and we are just, you know, learning about each one and the priests there and so on and so forth. And you kind of, you know, get to know these people, but it is very fast paced and short chapters and there's pretty much like something crazy going on in every single chapter of this book for the most part. I'm getting ahead of myself. So in this orphanage, you know, you're getting to know them and one day there's a knock at the door where someone brings a man who is dying in and they're like, hey, there's a snowstorm, like we can't make it anywhere else like can we just bring him in here he's dying he's gonna die like any minute and they bring this guy in and he has like these symbols carved all over him and he dies there and once that happens something is not quite right at the orphanage yeah like I said I enjoyed this one I think the pacing was great there was a lot of gore and violence for just a general horror book. Some crazy shit happened in this one and I was like, okay, okay. Like I always, you know, talk crap about the paranormal-ish type books, but uh, no, this one was freaking wild. It was absolutely wild. Um, I wasn't a huge, huge fan of the ending, like the very ending, but I, I don't know. And I'm not obsessed with this book. It seems like most people are like obsessed with this book. They're saying it's their favorite book they read this year. I don't feel that way, but I did like it. I did enjoy it and I recommend it. I finished this book in one day. I read this entire book in one day because it was so fast paced. Don't let the early 1900s timeline like make you nervous because there was, it, it was fine. It was fine. I read volume three of Killing Stalking finally and volume four just was delivered the other day. Um, so we are of course following our two guys. I, I don't really want to say anything because it's the third volume, but um, this is about this guy who has a crush on this other guy and next thing you know his crush held him captive. Or else just like 
a very abusive relationship. It's just about abuse and trauma and it's really messed up. It's really graphic. But yeah, we are just continuing to follow that story and the police and everything are involved. So yeah, highly recommend if you're looking for a messed up time. And then my next four star was His Pain by Roth James White. I feel like I belong in jail. I do. Come on, put the cuffs on me. Come on. Um, seriously? Like, I, I read this book and I sat here like this. Oh my god. Like, I was so paranoid that the police were gonna show up. That's how I felt reading this damn book. Roth James White? That's how I feel about him, okay? In the best way possible. So anyways, we're following this guy who, um, he's a teenager and he's been living his whole life with this uh, neurological disorder that he was born with that literally just creates pain everywhere, like sensations, touch, taste, smell, noise, like noise. <laughs> noise is one of the five senses. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, any kind of stimulus uh, just gives him this massive amount of pain. And so he has been living like this his entire life. Uh, his parents like have basically put him in a sem sensory deprivation bubble and they've been like struggling. They, they kind of feel like they should just let him die because it's so bad. So um, the mom finds this yogi on like a TV ad or something and so she invites him over to come kind of help because he said that he's like cured chronic pain before and stuff so they invite him over to help and this is kind of like their last hope and oh my god what happens from there oh my gosh I can't even tell you so many people are gonna find this offensive people are going to be puking like, I just feel like I need to get the word out here. I need more people to read this book because I need to see their reaction. I need to see them destroyed. <laughs> this is like absolutely insane. Like, I feel like, I keep saying the word like, um, I should just do a spoiler video for this. <laughs> this one and Zola. I feel like I so badly just want to sit down and spoil everything that happens because I feel like this is tea. Like I need to share with you the tea for the people that will never ever read this book. Like I just need to tell you. This is nuts. Like, but if I told you, someone would definitely come arrest me. Like I, I was sitting here like this. I can't believe, I cannot believe I read this book, okay? Roth James White ruined my life. I wanted, I want someone to make me a shirt that says, Roth James White ruined me. No, that sounds really wrong. No. <laughs> Roth James White ruined my life. Not ruined me though. Last but not least, I had one five star this month. It's really no surprise. I feel like a freaking fraud. It's not fair. It's Broken Dolls Deliverance by McKay Watson. Um, it's not fair. It's not fair. I genuinely, honestly think his books have been five stars so far and people are like shit talking me. They think I'm a fraud. They think I'm lying, but I am actually, look at this. I'm obsessed. Like I am so obsessed with his writing and I wish I could be like, McKay, I have criticism for you, but to be completely honest, I haven't had any so far because this is the exact type of extreme horror that I want to read, which I've talked about thousands of times on this channel, so you can stop judging me because I've already explained myself, okay? Um, but this is like, okay, so this is his first full-length novel. I mean, this is almost 300 pages, it's 264 pages, um, and we are following, it's just loosely tied to the first like Broken Dolls. Um, it could be read as a standalone if you wanted, but if you read Broken Dolls, this does follow the villain. We get more of a backstory from him as well as like what happened to 
some of our characters. I did appreciate that about this book. We got some more answers and backstory and we just learned to understand this character a little bit more. Um, but we are following this guy, Dane. Um, Dane was heavily abused uh, growing up and so he has turned his life into prostitution and drugs and basically mutilating his body and he becomes wrapped up in this man called the Puppet Master, I believe, right? Yeah, the Puppet Master. And uh, this has a snuff film element, revenge, gory games, um, the dark web, all of these things are involved in this and those are all of my sort of favorite extreme horror tropes and they just scare the crap out of me. Like when I'm reading like snuff film stuff, I'm like traumatized, right? Um, so this book got me and we're learning a ton of character development backstory, uh, past and present timelines, kind of what happened to Dane in his life um, at home growing up, and his love interest in the book, and we're just really learning about this character. It feels very emotional, everything was in depth, it felt personal, and I I'm just obsessed. I was obsessed with these characters. I genuinely, genuinely cared about them and what was going on in the book. So yeah, I mean, this was another hit for me. I just couldn't stop reading. Uh, it did take me forever to read though because I was in the hospital and on pain meds. So I would like to do a reread of this one. A um, couple things here and there are a little bit fuzzy. So I would like to reread this in the future. But uh, I just, I absolutely love this. It was extreme. It was brutal. It was heartfelt and like actually made me feel something. So anytime an extreme horror book actually makes me feel, it's pretty much guaranteed to be a five star for me. So that's kind of how I rate my extreme horror. Uh, if it's like well done and makes me feel something, it's a five star for me. So that's how I felt reading this. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, McKay can just do no wrong in my eyes. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely loved this. All right, so that is it. Those were the 14 books that I read in September. So let me know your favorite book that you read in September was, and I will see you in my next video. Also, quick side note, should I wear another costume for my October wrap up? This was kind of fun, right? Um, I can be uh, Jennifer from Jennifer's Body if anyone's interested in that. <laughs> Uh, that's the only other costume that I have, I believe. But yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!